hey, hey, I know you want to watch the video and I get it, but there's a bit of an emergency and I want to go ahead and throw it out there and see if maybe our community can help a little bit. Uh, Turning Tide Studios, one of the artists who has done work for this channel for a while now, is in a bit of a pinch. Uh, they are running a fundraiser right now uh, because they need a vehicle for work. They are starting a new job and their partner, uh, and then we'll be working on different schedules, and therefore they cannot use the singular vehicle uh, that they've been using for the last few years. As a result, uh, they are currently not able to start said job, and if they are not able to start said job, uh, they will not be able to actually, you know, afford living in the house that they're living in, uh, which is not the greatest situation in the entire world and if anyone can help out with that that would be amazing again i know you guys want to get to the video itself but uh this is kind of important to me there will be a link to both their twitter and also to their fundraiser so that in either case, if you guys can either shout out the fundraiser or their Twitter, or you can offer assistance uh, on the fundraiser itself, either way, all that would be appreciated. Uh, retweets, likes, and also donos are all incredibly helpful, and shares if you happen to be one of the boomers who use Facebook. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the video. I am, I'm ready, I'm ready for YouTube to just demonetize me for this one, I, I, it happens every time, I do a video about COVID, and then YouTube hits me with the, you're doing COVID misinfo, and then I tell them to manually review the video, and then that's not what's happening, there's no misinfo happening there, uh, and then I, I just, it, it just means that I have like a day or two of lost revenue every time, so I'm just going to accept that this video's not going to be monetized during the time that it matters, as always, because we got some COVID conspiracy stuff to get into again. That said, before we get into that, before we get into that, let's go ahead and get into the fan art section. And uh, this one's going to make you want to die. This is from Jack and Quill, who is one of the channel artists. And Jack and Quill has made something... Um, well, it's uh, it's a work in progress of a cat girl call for an uprising. You know, if there was anything that would insult this person the most, it's probably that, all things considered. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing now. Congratulations. You will never be able to unsee it. As always, thank you very much for your cursed fan art submissions. If you want to see your fan art in a future episode, drop it into the Discord channel. And with that said, let's go ahead and roll the intro. All right. Now that I'm done uh, having my eyes get bleached, let's go ahead and talk about Sherry Tenpenny. Now, this is... We're just going to watch the video. I'm not going to... I'm not going to preamble this too much. Let's go. Let's just fucking do it. Let's just fucking do it. Right Wing Watch has clipped this for us. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have here. People have got to start saying to their bosses who are require them to get tested if they don't get a shot, that you need to start saying to them, torture is illegal in the United States of America. Ma'am? Ma'am. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Raz? Sorry. Raz? Sorry. Raz? <laughs> Look, I'm just going to go out and say it. We're dealing with grade A stupid here. Getting a vaccine is not tantamount to torture. Getting a vaccine, uh, getting, getting a COVID test is not tantamount to torture. Now, it's a little uncomfortable. You get a little swab shoved up your nose, and yeah, that's probably not a thing you want to have happen more than once, but um, yeah, no, I I'm sorry. A vaccine is not a violation of the Jeeva Convention, ma'am. This is a Wendy's. And you repeatedly testing me for being non-compliant and disobedient is torture. And I look, 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 look. If you are going to come into a business work for that business, and you make the choice, you decide you don't want to get vaccinated, then them asking you to get tested every once in a while 
so that they can make sure that they're not going to infect their workforce and also their customers. I'm sorry, you're literally walking in going, Hey, hey, I want to be patient zero. Look at me. For Halloween, I'm going to be the progenitor of another fucking pandemic. That's what you wanted to be. So, of course, when you LARP that, you're going to be treated like fucking patient zero. What else do you expect, hun? Jesus. And I think that we're going to be writing that up and we're going to sending it into the EEOC and we're going to start accusing you and these policies of being torture. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. You literally chose this life. You literally chose it. You had the option. You had the option to just get a vaccine. A vaccine that will not fucking hurt you. And then instead, you decided to be a Karen about it. And in so doing, created a world where you would de you would necessarily need to get tested more. Because you are more likely to be a carrier. You are more likely to transfer it. You are more likely to be a problem. And then in so doing... This is like complaining to somebody that your hand got burned when you shoved it on the stove yourself. You literally sat there, you looked at that red hot iron, you know what heat is, you're old enough to know the end result of this, you put your hand on it, and as the second and third layers of flesh start to sizzle off of your appendage, all you can think of is, I want to talk to the manager. Really? Really? That's where we're at? That's where we're at now? Okay. Okay. Sure thing, hon. Let's let's keep going. Call a spade a spade. I will. Uh, a vaccine is a safe thing. Uh, and testing is not torture. And we know that this is murder by injection, right? What? And you're supposed what? to give this as sacrificing your children. We gotta read this shit. What? COVID is a cleverly engineered coup to disrupt your health and your God-given DNA and your God-given temple. This is not a conspiracy theory. Human DNA from aborted fetal tissue... <sighs> really? We're here now. We're here again. We're here again. Okay, let's fucking do this. All right. The aborted fetal tissue that you're so worried about is from 30 fucking years ago. We've been cultivating the same cells over and over again. I I'm, I'm sorry. No babies have been fucking harmed. No babies have been harmed in the making of these vaccines. The aborted fetal tissue is a thing that Karens like this use so that they can shriek and go, Ah! You're injecting dead babies into your body! Well, uh, first of all, ma'am, no, I'm not. Secondly, if I was, that would be metal as shit. So, either way, I win. Either you're wrong, or I'm doing something insanely more cool than you think it is. But, at the end of the day... No, we're not use we're not we're not just aborting babies on mass for the purpose of creating vaccines. We've literally been cultivating the same fucking group of cells for decades. But okay, lipid nanotech and nanobots can assemble, disassemble, and recombine. Whether or not that's true does not mean that there are nanobots in your fucking vaccine. Hydrogel permanently binds to tissues. Okay, what does that have to do with anything here? Spike proteins permanently binds to and destroys tissues. This is the there's mercury in my vaccines of 2021. Remember, uh, about 20 years ago, we actually used to use a form of mercury as a preservative in various vaccines. And uh, I, there's a Facebook post. And I remember this Facebook post because I shared this Facebook post ages ago, and I had to get corrected by one of my League of Legends buddies who happened to know more about chemistry than me. And it was a Facebook post about vaccines and how if I injected uh, mercury into your child, you'd call me a terrorist, but if a doctor injects mercury into your child, we call them a hero with a vaccine, uh, and how that's silly. Now, 
I was a dumb fucking idiot when I reposted that, and anybody who reposts that now is also a dumb fucking idiot. Basically, yes, mercury being used as a preservative can sound alarming when you don't know the amount that's there and what its effect will actually be on your body. Um, for the record, in this particular case, uh, for you to have any effects of this, uh, for you to have any like negative effects from this mercury in your body, um, you would have to have a shit ton of vaccines. Like there was what maybe a one hundredth the mercury in here than you would consume in your normal plate of fish. But besides that, besides that, uh, the point is, back then, it was very convenient to freak out about mercury. Uh, in your vaccines as a preservative because, well, quite frankly, when I say injecting mercury into your body, that doesn't sound good to you. You, like, instinctively know that you're not supposed to chew on a thermometer, Justin. You instinctively know that, and yet you fucking did. I, I still don't understand why you fucking did that. That was real dumb of you. Anyway, the point is... It sounds scary when you say it without context. So when you say this without context, it sounds scary. You're going to have to actually explain why this is or isn't going to be a major problem. Because you can't just say, Mercury poisons the blood. Cool. What is the relevance here? But let's go ahead and continue. Graphene oxide, found by two separate labs. Carbon molecules that can take on a magnetic property when exposed to hydrogen. Ah, yes. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and highlight this one here. Who here has heard the vaccines make you magnetic thing? I, I, I will say that I have a friend uh, who has tried to use the vaccines make you magnetic conversation. Uh, to me in real life um, and to which two of the people at the table with him who happened to be vaccinated both grabbed keys and shoved them on their arms in, a, in an attempt to show that no they're not they're not fucking magnets I'm sorry vaccines don't make you magnetic every single video you've seen on the internet that says that uh, vaccine is making you magnetic if you take baby powder and put that on the person's arm at the point of contact, that key will slip right off every fucking time. And the reason for that is because it's not that the keys or whatever metal object, coin, what have you, that they're putting on their arm, they're not sticking to their arm because they're magnetic. You can do this to unvaccinated people too. Your arm is not a frictionless surface. Things like coins and shit can cling to your skin. If you don't believe me, I want you to lay down in bed uh, with your shirt off, but with a pocket full of change. And when you wake up and that change has fallen out of that pocket, but it is literally plastered all over your back, and as you're walking around, you can just feel the coins peel off your skin, then you'll know why this is fucking bullshit. But let's go ahead and continue. Two. Balak. To Baal, child sacrifice being resurged in these final days from the Babylonian mystery schools, from the Tower of Babel, and the descendants of Nimrod. We're not sacrificing babies to make vaccines, Karen. Holy shit. And this is what is happening. And if you see anybody participating in this, you need to be challenging them of what they are doing to their spirituality and what they are sacrificing their children to. So if I get a vaccine, I'm I am fucking with my spirituality. See, this is the love this is the lovely thing about vague posts like this. What is my spirituality? To 10 different people in my audience, it's probably something completely different. Because that's the thing about something like spirituality. It's a made-up term, and it means different things to different people. If you are a polytheist, spirituality is different than if you are a monotheist. If you're an atheist, spirituality is something that is different. And even amongst various polytheists and atheists... Spirituality can still mean different things to the individual people in those groups. It is a nothing term for the purposes of most conversations. What is spirituality to me? Doesn't matter. What is spirituality to you? Doesn't matter. 
Nobody's sacrificing this thing when we put a vaccine in our body. If I were to actually look at this logically, if I were to look at this logically, then I would accuse this person of engaging in a category error, as vaccines happen to be natural substances that are put into your body, and nothing supernatural that you happen to have would be categorically affected by these things. But that's if I were to take everything that she's saying wholesale and just run with it. But let's go ahead and continue this absolute madness. You know, I had a really good friend who said, you know, we've sacrificed over 60 million newborn, unborn babies in abortion. We have multiple states in this country who actually allow late term abortion. Yeah. And there is one extra one we should have allowed. And they are currently speaking, ma'am. Two of them, actually. I'm here. But point is, no. Abortion is not sacrificing children. It is giving women the right to what does or does not utilize their body. I'm sorry. Now we are doing very, 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 very late-term abortion by killing five-year-olds. This is how... Wait! How... Wait! Who's killing five-year-olds? Who? Who? Where is this happening? Ma'am? Ma'am? Person who's likely bred and had children and has taught them this bullshit? Who? Who is sacrificing five-year-olds? Where is this happening? Happening in America, people. And it's your job to stop everybody you know and wake them up and shove it in their face. And if they defund you off of social media, who cares? defund you off of social meat what the fuck does that mean i'm sorry hold on defund you off of social media is this like trying to appropriate the defund the police talking point but taking the deplatforming talking point and just sh shoving them together is that, is that what's happening i don't know what this means now for someone like me, maybe this means something a little different. I mean, for, for me, there is social media that I use that if I get defunded on, it would suck. But for, for most people, they, they aren't making money off social media. Like, like, there's really not that many people who are doing this. But okay. Now it's about trying to save unborn babies and pregnant women. It's about uh, the... They, they now are actually starting a trial in to give these shots to six-month-olds. Yeah, because we're trying to make sure that more people are inoculated against a, a, a fucking virus, Karen. That's that's what we're doing. That's why we're here. So here's the thing. We do tests to see if it is safe based on, you know, the state of a child's immune system. Uh, we do these tests to see if it's safe for us to actually vaccinate them younger and younger. Now... To people like this, that is a terrible thing. That 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 scares her. That freaks her out. The truth of the matter is, though, this is A, completely normal, and B, not that heinous of a thing. Think of it this way. What is the one place where you have the highest rate of people infecting other people? Honestly, schools. These are the places where you get the most people packed in all the time. These are places where people get sick all the fucking time. And a lot of this comes down to the fact that not only do you have a lot of kids who are stuffed into areas with one another. Oh, by the way, this disproportionately affects poor people as well. Uh, because if you're in a poor area, then your schools have less funding and likely have more kids per teacher because there's less funding in that school. Uh, therefore, you have more kids packed into single classrooms because there's also less square footage in these schools. So you end up having more little incubators walking around in lower, lower funded areas. But let's ignore that part and just talk in broad terms. When you have children in schools, even in like fucking K kindergarten daycare ages, these little human incubators are not going to 
sit idly by and wear masks. They're not going to make sure that when they sneeze, they're not rubbing it on all of the furniture and everything around them. They're not going to do what they need to do to protect their fellow man from COVID. They're just not going to. That's this is not a thing they're going to be doing, at least not in the numbers we would need them to be doing it in order to be safe. Do we also know that children can die of COVID? Yes. Do we also know that they can be affected by long COVID? Yes. So it would behoove us then to protect children. Yes? Yes. Okay, cool. Now that we know that children are both walking incubation facilities and also need to be protected from COVID, not just because they can transfer it to their teachers and we don't want to be sacrificing them on the funeral pyre of your own dipshittery, Karen, but we also want to make sure that these children are safe. Their teachers are safe, their parents are safe, etc. So, what's the best way to do that? Well, we can't just make them all conform. That's uh, that's, that's not going to work. I'm sorry. Anybody who's tried to wrangle kids and get them to do what they want to do, uh, you know that this is not going to work on a mass scale. But if they happen to be inoculated against COVID, then this is probably a lot easier to achieve. To be fair, there's adults who aren't doing what's needed to protect the community. Well, yeah, duh. <laughs> there are people who are walking around unvaccinated without masks and, and, and literally, like, coughing on shit in grocery stores. Yeah, yeah, no, there are people being very, very dumb. And they breed. Again, this person probably has children. You know what we call those coughing people? Terrorists? Yeah, that's what I'd call them anyway. But the point is, the point is, the safest bet is to figure out at what point it is safe to inoculate these children so that they can make sure that they are not being super spreaders of this virus. We do know that the vaccine helps you to not spread the fucking virus. Is it a 100% thing? No, no vaccine is. You're not supposed to be. They help your immune system perform. That is their job. But let's continue. This is child sacrifice. How? This is the resurgence of child sacrifice from How? the days of, of the Babylonian mystery schools. As it said in Genesis 6. And what Jesus himself said that in those final days it will be like as in the days of Noah. And what were they doing? Child sacrifice? And what else were they doing? They were giving and giving in marriage and not paying a bit of attention to things. And their thoughts were totally on evil. So, first of all, I don't give a shit what their thoughts were. What what lies in the brain of somebody who I do not know and existed thousands upon thousands of years ago? Immaterial to me. Don't care. Honestly, what exists in the brain of somebody who exists today who I don't know? Immaterial. I don't care. But you care a lot. This is somebody very upset that they cannot engage in proper thought control. Because God needs to be in control of your thoughts, apparently. Somehow he made you with free will and also is very concerned about what you're thinking. It's very strange to me. Uh, but the bigger point here, moreover, is that there's this claim that a bunch of people in the days of Noah were sacrificing children. Whether or not that was happening is, again, immaterial to me. I don't care. What I care about is the fact that you think that taking a vaccine is actually sacrificing children now what we're gonna find is that in 10 years the people who have received the vaccine uh, are not going to be statistically any worse off than people who did not receive the vaccine outside of covid as a measurable variable because that's how vaccines work they help with a singular or a cluster of related issues they do not permanently cripple you the way that this woman apparently thinks happens or you know better yet die apparently it's a long-term abortion when you give somebody a vaccine despite there being literally zero data to support that 50 percent of people don't have common sense common sense is also immaterial but let's go ahead and continue uh, there's only a little bit left of this this is evil 
All right. That's it. it. It was just her saying this is evil. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Hmm. Let's think about that. Is it evil to try to make sure that children en masse are uh, inoculated from a deadly disease? No. Is it evil to try to make sure that children en masse are inoculated from a disease that can scar their lungs? No. Is it evil to inoculate children en masse from a disease that can actually make sure that they are not giving a disease to their parents or teachers? No. And since that is the case, since it is not evil to do any of these things, let's go ahead and talk about what's actually happening here. This is somebody who is posturing, but somebody who is very afraid. This is an audience of people who want to be afraid as well. What we need to be asking ourselves in a situation like this is, what does somebody gain from this kind of fear? From my perspective, back when I was a hardcore conspiracy theorist, what I gained was a feeling of being special. A feeling of being part of something greater than myself, and a feeling of being one who had gained special knowledge. I remember panicking about getting the swine flu vaccine because I thought that it was going to contain the mark of the beast. We have this all the time. Now, is there money involved? Sure, for some people. But I guarantee you, 90% of the people who are retweeting this on Twitter, they're not getting money from any of this. They're just, they're just not. They're afraid. And they think that by engaging in this the way that they are, they are somehow protecting themselves. They're somehow doing good in the world by doing this. They think that by spreading this misinformation, that they are actually spreading knowledge. Now, unfortunately, a video like this is only going to appeal to, uh, like my video, is only going to appeal to people who already know that what these people are saying is bullshit. So what can we do when we see shit like this? Well, if that's your grandmother in the audience... Maybe you can have a sit-down conversation with her. Or maybe if that's your mom in the audience. Or your dad. Have that conversation. Like, hey, why do you think these things are the way they are? Do yourself the favor. It sh this should not be a political issue. This should not be something that we're having to do. But we are living in the world where we have to do this. Educate yourself on how a vaccine works. Educate yourself on the difference between a bog standard vaccine we've been using for ages and an mRNA vaccine. And the things that make them different and unique from one another. Educate yourself on what a goddamn protein is. So when this person freaks out about spike proteins, you don't have to sit there and do what I'm doing right now and twiddle your thumbs actually learn about what these things are and do. And what you'll find, especially if you're looking at properly cited articles, is that vaccines are, by and large, when they are being created correctly, harmless to people. Because their job is as an inoculant, not as some sort of mass aborting agent. And if we can get more people educated in this then we can spread that education around. And it sucks that a lot of this has to happen on the individual level because, well, we live in a hyper-polarized society. If I were to go on a stage and do a presentation like this uh, about vaccines and what they do and everything, I realistically would only be appealing to my own base, people who are not there to learn about vaccines because they disagree with me, but people who want to learn about vaccines because they want to be better equipped anyway. That's what would happen. A lot of this stuff is going to be in the home. A lot of these conversations are going to be with your families and with your close friends. And that sucks. Because putting that burden on any of you guys is astra fucking nomical, especially when some of these people have control over your house and home. But quite frankly, the world's a worse off place if we are constantly fighting against life-saving medicine. It's bad enough that we have people who fight against life-saving medicine because it might be socialized. 
it's even worse when we have literal free medication being given out to people to help them through one of the worst things that's happened to several nations in the last few years. And yet there are people fighting against it tooth and nail because they think that there's some God prophecy that says that they have to. Well, with that said, let me know what you guys are going to do in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, let's go ahead and try to figure out a good in-between, between making fun of people who are definitely crazy with COVID conspiracy theories and reaching out to people who can honestly have their minds changed. With that said, insert end of video tagline here. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you want access to behind the scenes content for the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. I do weekly vlogs over there where I give uh, real life updates to what's going on behind the scenes on the channel, stuff that you don't really get uh, over here and, and even on Twitch. Uh, Patreon also helps the channel's stability a whole lot. Without Patreon, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Especially with the kind of content that I do, neither YouTube nor Twitch are the most stable sources of income. If you are a $20 and up patron, then you will be featured on the ending slides as shown in the beginning of the end credits. If you want to catch the streams where all this content comes from, then consider heading over to Twitch and following. And if you want to continue watching over here on YouTube, maybe consider clicking one of the end screen videos. And once again, I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me over on my channel. I wouldn't be able to do literally anything that I'm doing over here on YouTube without each and every one of you. So thank you.